Hi, my name is Anthony Laos, and I'm an aspiring game designer. Today I wanted to present a personal project of mine, a proof of concept prototype for a game called Final Fantasy Go. This was developed over the course of roughly three work weeks in Unity using Playmaker, a visual scripting interface. The main goal of this prototype is to capture the essence of playing a Final Fantasy RPG and then recreate it in the style of Square Enix Montreal's Go series of mobile games. So before starting, I had to determine what is the essence of playing a Final Fantasy RPG, and here's what I came up with. Level grinding, flashy combat, colorful cast of characters, and epic stories. Then I had to determine the essence of the Go games. So turn-based puzzle translation of a Square Enix franchise. Mobile friendly, so simple touchscreen gameplay and inputs, and short levels, easy to pick up and put down. I decided to go with the characters, story, and aesthetic of Final Fantasy VII for this prototype, and the 11 levels cover the beginning of the game until the escape from Mako Reactor 7, where the protagonists fight the guard Scorpion. Let's play, shall we? So the goal of the game is to reach the end of the level, that green sphere. And your avatar is Cloud Strife, this green capsule. And this is how the story would present itself over a little text box. So to move in a direction, you would swipe in that direction. But this build is on PC, and the controls are currently mapped to the keyboard and mouse, as it was the fastest way for me to make iterations. So as you can see, the player and the enemy have a certain level, or LV. To attack an enemy, you just need to slide into their position. And after you move, it's the enemy's turn to attack. So when attacking or being attacked, there's some certain rules you have to follow. If your LV is greater or equal than the enemy's level, they get destroyed. And destroying an enemy increases your level by one. But if the enemy's LV is greater than yours, and you attack them or they attack you, well, it's game over for you. So right now we're okay. That guy's LV is two, ours is two. So even, he, so even if he does attack us next turn, he gets destroyed. Because he has the same LV as we do. And that's how you reach the end of the level. As you move on to level 2, you can imagine that managing your LV is the main challenge of the game. Because right now, if we move to the right, we would die. Because this enemy's LV is 2, and ours is 1. So the player has to decide which enemies they want to engage and which ones they want to avoid to increase their LV to reach the end of the level. And this was the most elegant translation of level grinding in an RPG to a simple turn-based puzzle game that I could come up with. So in that case, being aware of all your enemies at once is very important, which is why the camera is fixed. So let's try that again, shall we? Maybe let's go for this guy instead of that guy. Okay, so we had the same LV, he was destroyed, ours goes up. Now we can attack this guy. Okay, cool. Just continue, I guess. Okay. Well, right now we seem to be stuck because this enemy's LV is 5 and ours is 4. So I'd like to take this moment to introduce casting spells. Maybe you noticed when I was defeating enemies that the limit bar here was filling up. But once you defeat 3 enemies, it fills up and you can cast the limit break spell. Um, so by clicking this now non grade icon of Cloud, it'll highlight all the enemies you can use the spell on. So this particular spell targets enemies that are one space away. So if there was an enemy here, he would also be targeted. If you tap the icon again, you'll just cancel the spell. But if you tap the enemy, you'll cast it. Okay, so what happened? So similarly to attacking an enemy by sliding to their position, casting spells follows a couple of rules too. If your LV is greater or equal than the enemy's LV, they get destroyed. But if the enemy's LV is greater than yours, then their LV is actually just reduced by yours. So if you remember, this enemy's LV was 5, and ours is currently 4. So when you cast a spell, 5 minus 4 is 1. So this enemy's LV is currently 1. So in that sense, the, the enemy's LV doubles as their health points. So now I can actually continue, because he attacks me, my LV is greater than his, and now I can beat him and reach the end of the level. Alright, let's skip to level 4 so I can introduce the party spells. Uh, at this point in the story, Cloud's just like, I'm not here for a lecture, let's just hurry. And Barrett's like, that's it, you're coming with me from now on. And then we get our first party member, Barrett. Um, each party member you get can cast one spell, one spur to level, to help Cloud out. On a side note actually, this is one of the first levels I tested in my physical prototype. Um, inspired by Raf Koster, the, the author of A Theory of Fun, uh, I just have a 
physical prototype kit with a bunch of wooden pieces, beads, cards, Uno cards, glue, scissors, dowels, and just a bunch of stuff like dice. And it's great for a game designer to have so they can just test out ideas really quickly. Just side note. Anyway, right now we seem to be stuck again because if we move this way, we'd get killed by this enemy. So I guess we should just tap Barret. So as you can see, these both of these enemies are highlighted. Barret's spell actually targets the first enemy in the same row or column as the player. So if there was an enemy on this side, they would be targeted too. And if there's an enemy on this side, they'd be targeted. But in this case, these are the only two enemies that are being targeted. We could attack this guy, but his LV is three. So three minus one would be two, which wouldn't really help us right now because he'd still be alive. So I guess we should target this enemy. Let's try it, shall we? Okay, so that enemy gets destroyed, our LV goes up, and the Barret icon gets grayed out because we used him for the level. Now we can actually proceed. So as you can imagine, as the game will progress, the player will need to manage their spells and their limit break to effectively increase their level to reach the end of the stage. So. As you can see, my limit break charged up because I defeated three enemies and I'm stuck again, so might as well use it. The enemies LD go down, and I can reach the end of the level. Right. So let's skip to level six, shall we? Oh, look, there's a new type of enemy. I wonder what it does. So let's just move. Oh, okay. So after attack, after that enemy attacks, it rotates 90 degrees. So new elements, such as new enemies and new spells, will be introduced roughly every two levels, which is why I skipped from level two to four to six. So I could just show you a vertical slice of some of the elements in the game. Why two levels? Well, I simply looked at the introduction of new elements from the first chapters of Hitman Go, Lara Croft Go, and Deus Ex Go, and then thought about the series they were trying to translate. So for, fi so for Final Fantasy Go, I felt that introducing a new element at roughly every two levels would always keep the situations interesting and varied for the player. Similar to how random encounters in RPGs are usually quite varied. I mean, even the enemies that I designed for the prototype are loosely based on only half of the different enemies the player can actually encounter in that section of Final Fantasy VII. Just like 30 minutes of it. So that's all I really wanted to present gameplay-wise. But maybe you're wondering what this logo here does. Well, it's the Shinra logo, and it leads to the store. Or, well, my ideas on how to possibly monetize this game. So first and foremost, unique character skins. I mean, Cloud has had a bunch of outfits throughout the years, so it'd be really easy to just sell them to the player. Or, I don't know, even just change your avatar. Why do you have to play as Cloud? We can play as Sephiroth for the whole game. That would be hilarious. <laughs> Um, also, new or unique game scenarios, like in this example I'll use Crisis Core because it was a prequel to Final Fantasy VII in the same universe, but you can essentially use any other Final Fantasy game in this ghost style of game. But maybe instead of the limit break, you'd use a, a different unique mechanic from that particular entry in the franchise. Another way is probably, I guess, unlock all the solutions. This is a staple of the Go games, and it's a pretty non-intrusive in-app purchase and completely optional, as always. But nonetheless, it's always worth exploring. So that's pretty much Final Fantasy Go in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. I guess I should finish this level. <laughs>